Ciao, welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're taking a look at the Heckler & Koch VP9 Tactical. A very, very nice pistol. This pistol started off around 2010. It was a product that was requested by the Bavarian police. Uh, they wanted a striker fired pistol, uh, which HK uh, provided. Now, HK is not new to polymer. In fact, they were the first polymer frame pistol that was ever brought to market. That was in 1970, the VP70 or Volks Pistol uh, 70 or People's Pistol uh, from 1970 which is many of you may or may not know that was a complete flop. It had nothing to do with the polymer or the striker, the fact that the trigger was like a Stanley staple gun. Uh, but that was the true uh, first polymer frame pistol. Glock, they may have the first successful polymer frame pistol, but uh, the first polymer was, pistol was done by uh, H&K back in 1970. The frame was taken off of the uh, HK P30, and the striker was very much similar to that of the VP70. HK is also not new to striker fired pistols. If you go back to the VP70, you look at the uh, the P7 series, uh, PC, P7 M8, they were striker fired. But this was their first modern pistol uh, that was done uh, in it with a striker fired system. Now, Glock uh, has done a very good job on the market. Uh, HK has always got itself out of the market because of price. Uh, they were always uh, two to three times more expensive than the competition. When this pistol was brought into the U.S., it was also HK's first chance to have a pistol under $700 uh, that would compete with everything else that's on the American market and for law enforcement. Um, and it certainly has. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over this pistol from uh, back to front and, uh, and, sh and show you what's special about it. We have a weight of 26.56 ounces. Uh, weight of the magazine is 3.28 pounds. Overall length, 7.34 inches. A barrel length of 4.09 inches. So again, like the P30, it does have some modifications to it. We're going to start with the grip. The grip, as you see here, uh, has t removable segments. The grip, while similar to the P30, is much more, go for the word, modular. Uh, this has both removable side plates as well as back for a back strap. As you can see here, we have for larger hands, we have an insert. And this, of course, for the back strap, we have one as well. Of course, you see a large, I believe this is the medium and this is the small. Uh, and this fit me perfect. This here is the 20 round magazine. Uh, this is more for their competition or, or their higher capacity. The normal magazine it comes with is a is a 17 shot magazine. Now, fortunately, because uh, of how expensive the HK magazines are, you also have magazines that are manufactured by ETS. The ETS polymer magazines come in 17, 20, 130, 40 round magazines. As you can see, they're translucent, and we've used these quite a bit. And these work just as good as the as the steel magazines. As we look at it from the slide here, we have it's machined from a single bar stock of steel. The finish is carbon nitride corrosion resistant finish. Now you have front and rear serrations, and you also have this really neat longer tab on the back, uh, which definitely aids uh, very much so in, in retracting the slide, probably better than I've seen any pistol at all. That's part of it. It's uh, just a big hump here on both sides. It gives you a really good perch on it. The sights we have on here, we have a front which is trim and a back which is solid black. These sights are high profile and they're, uh, they're suppressor height sights because obviously you can see we have a suppressor on here. Now also looking at the frame, you'll see we have the magazine release which is ambi. It's the same side. This is very similar to that of the USP. And also when you take a look at the trigger here, this looks like a Glock trigger but it's not. You do have the little tit in the middle for, for safety but you have a much better trigger. It is striker fire, as we said. It does have a cocked indicator on the rear, which is one of the neatest things about this pistol. As you can see, we have a cocked indicator. It just tells you when this, this is ready to go. When you pull the trigger, that goes away. So you always can tell from the rear of the gun whether it's uh, in a cock position or it's not. Now the trigger pull has a very short take up to it, which is one of the nicest uh, striker fire uh, pistols we've seen. In fact, uh, if you look at most of the, uh, the, the you know the current striker fire pistols, the trigger pull has more of a double action feel, not this one. This one has far more of a single action uh, type feel to it. Uh, I think it's much nicer. We have ambi uh, slide stop on both sides. You also have a live cartridge indicator uh, on the extractor. When there's a round in the chamber, this will stick out, and this will enable you to either see or to run your finger across and be able to tell that the pistol's got a round in the chamber. Again, looking at the left side, we have the slide stop, and we also have this assembling release lever, which we'll uh, take a look at here in a minute. Now, the barrel on here is what makes these guns really famous. Let me remove the suppressor here. I have my Silencer Co. Octane on here, which is uh, one of my chosen suppressors for uh, 9mm. Now, this does have the left-hand thread on it, which, uh, you know, would be nice for them to make a nice half by 28 which will be more compatible. The barrel that we have on here is cannon-grade cold hammer-forged uh, steel. Uh, polygon rifling. 
This barrel has been tested up to 90,000 rounds. So that's an absolute incredible uh, amount of testing that's been done on this pistol, which is what you would expect out of H&K. As you see, we have the threaded barrel. As you see here, we have our, our TRL H1 uh, streamlight, which is 1,000 lumens. It's an incredible amount of uh, light in such a small package. Now, underneath here, you have 1913 rails. We'll remove this so you can take a look. Now, this is also probably one of the first pistols, well, the H the, uh, the HK45 series uh, had 1913 rails, uh, but prior to that, all the pistols had uh, the, uh, the, uh, the proprietary accessory rail that was done by H&K. Now, of course, you have to understand that different proprietary rail goes back to the time prior to 1913. So um, these obviously came up after the 1913 rail. Also, we have on here, this is an optics ready platform. Um, the original ones were not optics ready, but this is a VP9 tactical. So again, we have the optics ready as well as the, as well as the threaded barrel. Now the site that we have on here is the Vortex Venom. Um, it's not too expensive, uh, the MSRP around $350. The 3 MOA DAT reticle takes a CR1632 battery and it has up from 150 on a high power up to, th uh, to 30,000 hours on uh, low power. It's a one power, one power magnified. The length is uh, 1.19 inches, weighs about 1.1 ounces. Um, I've used several of these sights recently on several different guns. And the Vortex sights are probably one of the nicest ones that I've used, uh, especially when you look at the money, uh, which you'd pay, say, for a Trigicon or for Leopold or something along those lines. For this money, you're getting one hell of, a, of an optic on here. So we're going to go over how to disassemble. Obviously, we're going to make sure we're clear, which we are. We're going to pull the slide back, lock it open to the rear, drop downward on the on the, on the uh, assembly latch and go forward. Now this one here, like the Glock, we do have to pull the trigger to release the slide. Now looking at the bottom, we have a uh, recoil spring which is flat. It's captive just like a Glock, a flat recoil spring, longer life. We can pull the barrel right out and we can take a look at the slide. Now again, what you expect from H&K is just a complete uh, beautiful machining. Here you don't see any chatter marks on here whatsoever. You can see we do have a passive firing pin block in here. This is a much different system compared to what Glock for as far as it being a standard type uh, uh, striker system. This is a little bit more complex. Again, it's much more like their uh, VP70 that they had had. Again, taking a look at the barrel, the threaded barrel. As I said, this is not one half by 20, unfortunately. This is a left-hand thread. It's a European thread. Uh, we would love to see H&K do that, but this is a European gun made in Europe. So it's, you know, you're probably going to see more of what they have over here. These are not built here in the United States like a lot of the other ones are. Taking a look at the, at the ramp, everything is all polished down. Uh, we'll take any kind of ammunition. You know, I've had these over the years. I've done reviews on these for Small Arms Review, uh, Small Arms Defense Journal in the past. The, the original version is not the, the, the tactical. And we've put all kinds of different types of ammunition through them, all kinds of hollow points, and we've never had any, any issue whatsoever. Now again, taking a look at this uh, glass reinforced polymer uh, frame. Again, we do have the uh, removable back straps. We have an over, oversized trigger guard. You can see that uh, we have a steel insert in here, rides on steel rails. Uh, this is all coated in that, in that Dow Corning finish for uh, anti-corrosion. Uh, very, very durable frame. Now for reassembly. We drop, insert our recoil spring. Now, for as far as the suppressor is concerned, um, I'm very fond of the Silencer Co. suppressors. This is my Silencer Co. Octane 9 uh, HD. This is the longer uh, version. They do have a shorter version as well for 9mm. And we've had a lot of good luck with this one. Uh, you're looking at a decibel of about, about 1.27 dB uh, for your reduced sound on this. Not an expensive. You're looking around $624, but uh, it's excellent. Taking it apart to clean. Uh, this particular one's probably had at least 20,000 plus rounds through it. Uh, I, pretty much any gun that comes in here I, that's 9mm, this one goes on it for its testing. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to go to the range and we're going to see how this one shoots.
Well, we shot at our, at our challenge targets, our steel uh, targets. So this made things a lot uh, easier on us. It's been a lot more fun, too, you know, hearing those bullets, bullets ping. We do have a code for any of you guys who are interested in getting any steel targets. We're 10% off of all steel targets over at uh, Challenge Targets. So if you're in the market for some targets, these are excellent targets. Uh, I've had these targets for a very short period of time, and I've shot a shit ton of rounds on them. And I've had, uh, and, and, and it's holding up just fine. So that's been something that we've, uh, we've really been enjoying doing. Um, as you can see with the suppressor with subsonic ammunition, all you're pretty much hearing is just the, the slide. Uh, accuracy, as you see, is beautiful. I mean, that's uh, what you come to expect out of uh, HK pistols. You know, as again, as I said in some previous videos, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking about group size uh, when we test guns as writers and as media. And uh, we, we really do lose track of what the point of a, of a combat pistol is. And it's not to put one bullet on top of the other or in the same hole. That's not what they're designed for. They're designed to poke holes in bad guys and for them to bleed out. Um, and as long as you're getting within, your, within the chest, uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do. But um, the reliability is there. The cost, again, it is it does cost you more than a Glock and more than a lot of the other pistols that are out there. But those of you who want to buy an HK but you don't want to uh, sell your firstborn uh, for it, uh, this is a good way to go. Uh, and there's several different configurations. Uh, you have versions that are not optics ready. You have versions, obviously, that don't uh, they're not suppressed. If you're fortunate enough to live in a state where you're free and you can have suppressors, uh, that's one thing about H and K pistols. Every one I've ever shot. But when it comes to suppressors, they are they are suppressor ready. Uh, they work excellent with the suppressors. So I do hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.